Well, the movie. I'm not going to let you miss anything. <laughs> Let's do it. Girls just want to have fun. The movie rated PG. Now playing. Consult your local newspaper for showtime. Jerry, what's so great about Plowed Minnesota's annual spring sale? Kim, it's the great savings. Select from any of our hundreds of custom carpets and get the 3 8 padding free. Free carpet padding, that's great. Yep, like carpets from World, on sale and get free padding too. How about do it yourself free padded carpet? There's spring sale price from $249. And Plowed Minnesota's wallpaper is on sale too. You bet you can wallpaper prices and value unmatched by the competition. Plowed Minnesota's annual spring sale. Direct from the factory to you. It's Bosley's Law. She who buys bargain trash bags can be penny wise, but trash foolish. Oh, I almost made it. So close. Close doesn't count in trash bags, Judy. Why take chances? Flat trash bags are made with three plies of stress flex that lets the bag stretch without breaking. That's more like it. Why take chances? Get glad. Now we've lowered prices on these glad bags. An even better reason not to take chances. You're watching WTCN-TV, Minneapolis, St. Paul. From the Twin Cities Action Center, News 11, your new choice for news. With Paul Majors, Diana Pierce, Tom Ryder on sports, and meteorologist Paul Douglas. Good evening, Tommy. Tonight's News 11, Spring's Wrath is now upon us. Right now, there are several storm warnings and a watch for 11 country at this hour. And Barry Finn joins us now with the latest. Barry? Okay, Paul and Diana, we do have uh, some problems going on with the warmth we had. We've got a number of warnings. Let's go through those first, and we'll take a look at radar as we do this now. You can see that the heavy red ones are the most intense thunderstorms. You see a number to our south and a number to our northeast. The warnings, in effect, until 515 for southern Washington and eastern Dakota counties, in also, western Pierce County of western w Wisconsin and Polk County. You can see that there are some heavier thunderstorms also down to the south. There may be a need for more warnings. The entire area remains under a watch until 10 p.m. And again, Paul and Dana, most of the heavy weather now just off to the east of the Twin Cities, south and north on a line. And we'll be watching that and we'll update the whole forecast in a few minutes. And all of this just as you promised us. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Barry. And News 11 has learned a Minnesota man missing in Mexico is now presumed dead. John Walker disappeared January 30th in Guadalajara while researching a book about drug trafficking. We have a crew in Mexico City which has been traveling with John Walker's wife, Eve, and was with her today when she received the news regarding her husband. Marty Burns Wolf is on the phone right now from Mexico City with the story. Marty? Well, Paul, we were with Eve Walker this afternoon when she learned that her husband, John, had been beaten and taken away by a Mexican drug dealer and a murder suspect. Now, that was back on January the 30th in Guadalajara, and it was the last time that Walker was seen alive. Rafael Caro Quintero is in jail now on charges of murdering U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency agent Enrique Camarena. But a panel of justice statement, and that is something like the testimony given to a grand jury, says eyewitnesses saw Quintero and his bodyguards beat John Walker and his companion, 33-year-old Alberto Radilat of Texas and then put the men into a car and drive away from a Guadalajara restaurant. Uh, we have also learned now that the U.S. Embassy here is trying to pressure Guadalajara officials into speeding up the investigation in hopes of putting together all of the pieces to this story and finding the bodies of the two men. Meanwhile, Eve Walker will return home shortly, while the parents of Walker's friend, Alberto Radilat, will probably meet with U.S. Ambassador John Gavin on Monday. Paul? Well, now, Marty, you, you said eyewitnesses saw John Walker beaten and taken away in a car. That, that was apparently a statement like given to a grand jury of some sort. How did, how did you obtain that information? Where did that come from? Well, it, it comes from the Assistant Attorney General's office here in Mexico City. We obtained it through the father of John Walker's companion that night. Uh, Dr. Felipe Rodelat of Texas has been down here since uh, the first week in February trying to find out what happened to his son and to John Walker. Today, it seems his battle for information and Eve's fight to find out what happened to John uh, came to a close. The investigation will now center on finding the bodies of the two men. All right. We well, hope that we will have more for you tonight at 10 o'clock. All right, Marty. Marty Burns Wolf reporting live from Mexico City. Thank you. As News 11 reported last night, massive layoffs at controlled data are imminent. 
And today, members of our I-Team found out just how large those layups may be. John Bachman leads a team report. Confidential sources tell News 11 that this round of layoffs will involve between 1 and 2,000 control data employees. But company officials say they won't have an exact figure until reassignments are completed. Our sources say that total forced reductions by the end of the year could reach some 10,000, half of those in Minnesota. The I-Team has learned that two more subsidiaries of control data will be put up for sale, Ticketron, a national entertainment ticket ordering service, and Arbitron, an audience rating and measurement service. Company spokesmen, however, insist there are no plans for those sales at this time. Meantime, there has reportedly been no serious interest in the purchase of commercial credit, a financial services subsidiary which our sources tell us the company has been desperately trying to sell. We've also been told by sources close to the company that towards the end of the first quarter of this year, Control Data's revenue picture showed a loss of 30 cents a share. Company officials had reportedly planned on a profit of 33 cents. All of this paints a bleak financial picture of critical proportions. Only recently, officials reportedly were worried about a takeover. Now, according to our sources, even would-be purchasers of the company are keeping their distance because of Control Data's financial crisis. John Bachman, News 11. CDC's first home was in an old paper warehouse on the fringes of the Minneapolis Loop. Led by William Norris, a small group of men incorporated their computer company on July 8, 1957, and sold stock for $1 a share. A couple of years later, the firm had military contracts for large computers and the stock was worth more than $16 a share. By the early 60s, CDC was an international corporation. Almost from the beginning, Chairman Norris wanted his company to serve society. He called it an investment. It takes longer to uh, make a profit uh, from addressing uh, social needs. Uh, however, in return for patience, uh, uh, more stable, uh, enduring, and uh, profitable markets can be gained. Responding to racial rioting in 1967, Norris built a new plant in the ravaged Minneapolis neighborhood. He eventually built nine inner city plants and started sensitivity training for employees. Norris's vision seemed to be lined with gold, for by 1968, CDC stock was worth $140 a share, and initial investors were becoming wealthy. The dream of using CDC to serve society led to new ventures in the 60s and 70s. Many of these businesses had nothing to do with computers. And in recent years, the expansions have proved largely unprofitable. Today, the company remains Minnesota's third largest corporation, but the value of its stock has plunged to only about $30 a share, and the once prosperous corporation pledged to serving society is now struggling for its own survival. Bob Clark. News 11. And control data stock value was down again today. It closed at 29 and 7 eighths, down a quarter of a point. And this was a day of anxiety for many control data workers, worried they might be the ones getting the pink slips. News 11's Bernie Grace was at the plant gates this morning. Many control data employees arriving at work today were on edge, wondering if they would have a job by the end of the day. There seems to be a little bit of tension. Of, you know, a lot of people don't have a lot of work to do right now, and... You know, th those people have a lot of tension, yeah. Been Russ McDonald says work. workers have been offered time off without pay. Just, yeah, to take time off for one to 12 months, you know, go back to school, whatever they want to do. How many people have been taking that offer? Uh, they've been thinking about it. I've Not really. Other workers seem to be taking the layoff news in stride. Well, if it happens, it happens. Um, well, these are uncertain times for everyone in our industry, and, um, you know, the Japanese are are competing and we're doing our best to meet that competition but nobody knows what the future holds for us. Control data officials confirmed yesterday that starting today they would be notifying many workers they're being laid off. The layoffs come at the magnetic peripherals plants. There are 11 such plants in the Twin Cities area. Among the plants where layoffs were expected to be highest were the two Bloomington peripherals plants, one in Eden Prairie, another in Edina. Production workers according to company officials will not be laid off but many secretaries, clerks, and maintenance people have gotten notices. But some employees expecting the layoffs already did something about it. Yeah, I quit before they lay me off. <laughs> I'm in uh, data entry, yeah. so and they're closing our department down. So, <laughs> Company officials were not saying how many workers were getting notices today, but from all indications, it's a sizable number. In Bloomington, Bertie Grace, News 11. And as Bernie just alluded, exactly how many employees will get the axe is still not known. 
although published reports indicate it may be well over 2,000. And what will those employees face once they get the word? Kevin McDowell checked into that. Behind these walls at CDC headquarters, there were some tough decisions being made today. Who stays and who goes? For those who go, the company has already decided what they'll be getting. First, they'll get a week's severance pay for every year of service, 30 days notice. They can continue to participate in the company's health plan at their own expense. And those vested in the retirement plan will receive that investment with interest. Also, the company asks employees with questions to call the Employee Advisory Resource Hotline at 853-6400. Now, once they are out of a job, the workers will be heading for the unemployment line. You can apply by going to any local office of the Department of Economic Security. The state may also be able to help with its job service program. The maximum benefit amount currently is $198 a week. And essentially, you can collect up to 50% of the, the wage that you were earning while you were employed uh, for a period of up to 26 weeks. State unemployment officials say it's been kind of a tough year for layoffs in the Twin Cities. First, there was Westinghouse, which laid off 650 workers. Then American Hoist, which laid off 650. And now Control Data. At Control Data's headquarters in Bloomington, Kevin McDowell, News 11. The computer industry is not in trouble everywhere. As a matter of fact, the picture is quite rosy for Control Data's competition, IBM. Alan Costantini has that story. IBM faced the same sluggish market for computer orders that Control Data did. The result, IBM's first quarter earnings are down 18% from a year ago. And yet, IBM is not talking to its employees about early retirement, nor are thousands of layoffs looming. The big plant in Rochester is buzzing with the high-tech activity of 7,400 workers. This is a 5362 computer under construction. This is the newest product being made here at the Rochester plant. It's part of a successful product mix that has resulted in the hiring of 600 new workers here in the last year. This powerful small computer and its two bigger brothers, the System 36 and the System 38, are expected to push IBM's earnings back into the growth column in the second half of the year. This is good news for the state economy, since the highly thought of IBM products are made by Minnesotans. That includes a new, smaller version of the hard disk file, which the Rochester plant will supply for the new PCAT computer. Market analysts say comparing IBM and CD is like comparing apples and oranges these days. Unlike the highly diversified control data, IBM focuses on and is dominant in its own field of expertise. IBM continues to concentrate on new product research and a large part of its Rochester facility is considered a laboratory for product development. Wall Street is so convinced of IBM's stability that even though its earnings dropped, IBM stock climbed. It's good news for Minnesotans who depend on the company for their jobs. Alan Costantini, News 11, Rochester. So to wrap up the situation at Control Data tonight, there are a lot of anxious employees, but so far, as we can tell, very few have officially been laid off. However, those layoffs are expected to begin during the early part of next week. And to bring you up to date on the weather situation, we've just received word that a severe storm warning is in effect for eastern Chisago County and Washington County until 6 p.m., and Polk and St. Croix counties in Wisconsin also until 6 p.m. And, of course, Barry Finn will be along in a few moments with more. Still ahead on the News 11 Hour, Archbishop Roach begins serving his jail term. And supporters of abortion fight back with a movie of their own. Also ahead, a ski trip means some very special memories for some very special kids in 11 country. That and more coming right up. Hey, Arnie! We'll see you at the Open! The Toro Open is on now. It's the biggest sale of the year. You can save a lot of green on Toro wow, mowers, great. riders, and wow. gas trimmers. Nice. Come on down. You've got to see these savings. Wish they had the Toro open 30 years ago when I got my Toro. Save up to $100 on selected Walk Power mowers. R.J. Brandon. The Drexel Heritage Showcase in Edina is still jam-packed. So they're going out of business. Prices have come crashing down again. Living room. Slash. Bedroom. Slash. Dining room. Slash. Bedding, desks, lamps, everything must be sold. Now. Don't wait. Get the quality you've always wanted. Thomasville. Century. Drexel Heritage. That huge going out of business savings. Plus 90 days interest free. R.J. Brandon. Gallery. The Drexel Heritage Showcase. One block from Southdale Mall at 3535 West 70th Edina. Open seven days. Oh. 
Here comes another Embers, better than coupon, 24-hour meal deal. Brace yourself, because you can have breakfast 24 hours a day for just $1.99. And they mean a big jumbo breakfast. Two eggs, two pancakes, two slices of bacon, and two sausages. The 24-hour jumbo breakfast, seven days a week, just $1.99 at Embers Family Restaurants. Available at all Embers locations, where your satisfaction is guaranteed. Oh, and you don't even need a coupon. The secret of the new luxury is science. This efficient turbocharger is now available in all new Chrysler LeBaron. So now you enjoy LeBaron luxury with the power of a V8 and the efficiency of a Ford. Indeed, you have never been moved like this before. The new turbocharged Chrysler LeBaron. Quality. Backed by the Chrysler Protection Plan. This is the new science of luxury from Chrysler. Archbishop John Roach is in jail tonight, serving his two-day sentence for drunk driving. Roach reported to the Ramsey County Detention Center this afternoon and will be there until Sunday. He pled guilty last month to driving while intoxicated. He was arrested near Lindstrom, Minnesota, after his car brushed a convenience store wall. Action at the Capitol today included a bill that would change the abortion law in Minnesota if the Supreme Court overturn overturns its 1974 ruling. On a 7-5 to five vote, the Senate Health and Human Services Committee passed a bill that would rescind the abortion law in the state. The bill passed, but not before both sides had a chance to speak out. It's not something that's uh, evident uh, that would justify the taking of the lives of 16 million unborn, 50,000 every year in the last trimester, and thousands more after they're born because they're too weak. I need to remind you that legal abortion does not require that anyone have an abortion. It simply makes a safe, legal option available to those who choose. A similar bill passed the House last week. Now the measure goes to the Senate Judiciary Committee where it's expected to die. This weekend marks the end of Holy Week in the Eastern Orthodox religion. Services were held today for the Good Friday observance here at St. Pantelimon's Russian Orthodox Church and at other Eastern Orthodox churches in the Twin Cities. The Easter and Holy Week observances commemorate Christ's resurrection. The Eastern Orthodox use different calendars than other Christians, and so Easter is celebrated at a different time for members of that faith. Eleven kids who care are treasuring their memories tonight. They're just back from a Colorado ski trip thanks to a Channel 11 project called Give a Kid a Lift. The trip was set up to recognize the things they do for others in their communities. And as News 11's Barry Zavan reports, this was a chance for them to get back a little of what they've given. <laughs> Eleven kids who needed a lift, all decked out for the trip of a lifetime. Many had never been away from home. Most had never been on board a commercial airliner, but all were ready for the flight west. In Steamboat Springs, the dream became reality. The snow, the slopes, and the chance to test their newfound freedom. For some, getting their ski legs was the biggest test of all. It got better as the kids got more familiar with the slopes. Condo life was more like a five-day campout. Everyone pitched in to share the responsibilities of cooking and cleaning, but it was all part of the experience. Are you all from the Twin Cities area? Yeah. Okay. For many, the highlight was skiing with Olympic champion Billy Kidd. He had more than ski pointers to parcel out to these eager listeners. He urged them to reach beyond the limits of their abilities. Well, if you want to ski like a racer, keep your feet apart. Keep your knees bent so you can use your knees like shock absorbers. But what you also need is desire, determination, and perseverance. The reflections and memories of this experience were unanimously positive. Most of them boiled down to the universal realization that people and friendships are what really count no matter where you are. I just like the people I'm with. They're nice. Really nice people out here and they know how to treat people and they're not like people I've met before on trips that are real snobby and real mean to you and everything. Everybody that's come on a trip has been real nice and we've gotten along real well. So that's made it easier to have a good time. I've done things more skiing than I thought I'd never be able to do. I've gone up to the halfway top of the mountain and skied down on the most on the, um, more difficult than the easiest. It's really fun. The dream is over now, but the kids are not the same as when they left for Colorado. They've grown, they've learned, they've been up to the mountain, and they've brought home with them that view from the top. Barry Zivan, News 11. 
And a lot of people helped make Give a Kid a Lift a reality, so we'd like to thank all of them, Continental and Rocky Mountain Airlines, Hoy Guards, Afton Alps, Highland Hills, Buck Hill creeping up right there, Powder Ridge, Wild Mountain Ski Resort, Steamboat Springs Corporation, Shadow Run, and Storm Meadows Condominiums, where the kids were sort of camping out. Again, thanks to all of these organizations for their help. Coming up next, the word is now charge it in China. And here at home, there's still time to play the alphabet game, the IRAs and the IRS. All that and more as we come the ACK. is the biggest rib story since Adam. Eve, I'm hungry. Can I tempt you with a rib? That's not funny, Eve. At the ground round, Adam, they're great rib special. Save $2 on their tangy full rack. I remember when I had a full rack. Or half a rack with top sirloin steak. Or save a dollar on a half rack with boneless chicken. Oh, great. What's for dessert? Well, I've got this apple. Round round six ninety five rib specials. The most tempting offer since the beginning of time. Balancing your checkbook? Right. Getting more complicated and expensive, right? Right, with maximum minimum balances per check charges, ATM charges, monthly charges, plus special 25-cent credit for every $38 less transfer charges charge. You know, TCF's pass card checking with its hundreds of cash machines is simple and free with a low minimum. Me? Pass card checking is smart banking. TCF is smart banking. This is Eddie Albert. We made agriculture America's number one industry. But to ensure our future, our strength and sustenance will have to come from our young people. The future is in your hands. Contact your high school today to get started in vocational agriculture and the FFA. Now you can say charge it in China. That's because the communist country has issued its first credit cards and hundreds of Chinese are using them in stores and restaurants. Apparently, the plastic money was issued last month by the state-run bank. However, there is a catch. Credit cards can only be used in one city. Back here in the States, you don't have to charge anything to have the IRS help you figure out your taxes. That's because Uncle Sam has a couple of free numbers set up to answer your questions. The national hotline, 1-800-424-1040 will stay open this weekend and later than usual on Monday, the filing deadline. And a number in St. Paul, 291-1422, will also be open this weekend to only answer last-minute questions, not to tell you if your refund is on the way. And Monday is also the cutoff date for opening an individual retirement account. So tonight on Action 11, Mike Igo looks at some of the myths connected with IRAs. If you've been feeling like you're on a seesaw in trying to decide whether or not to open an individual retirement account, maybe you're caught up in one of the common misunderstandings about IRAs. First myth, that you can't touch the money once it's placed in an IRA account. That's not true. It's not true on two counts. First of all, you can get to your IRA once a year, and you can have it for as much as 60 days as long as you put the money back. Or maybe you're concerned that you'll have to pay a penalty and tax if you should keep the money out longer than 60 days. So what? The tax savings, if the money's been in the IRA long enough, more than offsets the amount of penalty and additional tax that you'll have to pay. Final myth, that an IRA has to be for $2,000. Well, IRAs can be for much smaller amounts of money. And in subsequent years, you can usually put in any amount you want. You're generally not tied to a specific dollar figure. So keep these things in mind if you're feeling like you're on the seesaw in deciding about an IRA. This is Mike Igo, Action 11. Little guy on the stick looked like Larry Bud Melman. <laughs> and unlike tax time, there's never a deadline for Action 11. And Action 11 is always free, by the way. Anytime you've got a problem, just write to Mike Igo at Action 11, Box 111, Minneapolis 55440. Coming up, consumers are borrowing more, especially when it comes to cars. Dennis Stoffer will explain in dollars and cents. And we hope you got your share of outdoor activities in today because we're about to get a soaking in the next day or so. Barry Finn, who's filling in for Paul Douglas, will have his forecast when we come back. This is an ordinary carpet with some ordinary stains. Today's milk, last night's lasagna. The protection is only sprayed on up there, so stains stick down here. 
But not on this carpet of Ankalon Nylon. It's got total built-in Scotch Guard protection from top to bottom. So spills practically slide off. Great, huh? Ankalon. The right carpet fiber when things go wrong. Available at all Carpet King stores. Back when they bought their farm, the Fortuna family also bought their first Frigidaire refrigerator. Today, they got a brand new Frigidaire. Isn't she a beauty girl? It's got everything that Mrs. Fortuna and the four Fortuna daughters always wanted. And Mr. Fortuna knows it's still hard to find a refrigerator that'll outwork or outlast the Frigidaire. So what happened to their old Frigidaire? Isn't she a beauty girl? Frigidaire appliances. Here today, here tomorrow. Hi, I'm 140 years old, but I don't look a day over 50. The reason? I listen to music. I get my music from the Wax Museum and Great American Music. Centerfield, John Fogarty's exciting solo album, on sale $6.99. Or get Building the Perfect Beast from Don Henley, on sale $6.99. Sales on now. In 11 country tonight, the first international freight ship cruised into Duluth Sport. The ship from Panama, known as the Blue Pine, battled gale force winds on its way to Duluth. The 585-foot-long freighter will pick up wheat and sunflower seeds to take on to Portugal. And a special ribbon-cutting ceremony in Somerset, Wisconsin. Laser Machining Incorporated is expanding its manufacturing facilities. And, of course, the ribbon was cut with a laser. The plant will be open to the public from 1 until 5 tomorrow. Very fit is here for Paul Douglas, who's off at a meteorological convention of mm -hmm. some sort, a bunch yeah. of wizards and magicians <laughs> hanging around. But you were telling me during the commercial break that, what, we were one degree away from a record? Yes, we made it to 82 out at the airport this afternoon, and believe it or not, Paul and Diana, the airport so far has recorded no moisture at all. Well, maybe they should start landing planes out here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and there are heavy thunderstorms, though. The airport uh, hasn't seen one, and this is the case. Not everyone will see one, but many people will. Right now, until 6 o'clock, there is a severe thunderstorm warning for eastern uh, Chisago counties, Washington counties here in Minnesota, and Polk and St. Croix counties in Wisconsin. That, again, that watch or warning, I'm sorry, is until 6 o'clock for strong gusty winds, hail, and uh, some heavy downpours, possibly even a tornado or two. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but first, let's find out what's causing all this. Take a look at how conditions were around the Twin Cities today. Look at that high. One degree shy of the record. 82 out at the airport. Overnight low was 48, and as I said, no moisture so far has fallen at the airport, which is ironic because some areas have seen as much as two inches of rain in some of the heavier thunderstorms. Right now at the airport, it's partly sunny, temperature 75, winds are south at 15, and dew point 52, humidity 45%, that's a little misleading because in many areas the humidity is well up over 80%. Pressure right now, 29.91 inches. Well, let's take a look at some morning lows around the country, and we'll get an idea of why the heavy thunderstorms have developed. Look at these lows, 50 degrees, coming all the way up into Iowa and the South Dakota. But if you head just a little bit off to the northeast, temperatures in the 30s, 20s, and 10s, that's a very strong contrast over a very short area. And it's that kind of contrast which will set up a line of heavy thunderstorms. And when you get a storm system moving along as we have, that will help produce fireworks from Mother Nature. We have been seeing them. Currently, there's the storm system. It's running along the warm front, the leading edge of warmer air. In fact, uh, earlier this afternoon, Temperatures over about 150 miles from here to about Duluth ranged as much as 40 to 45 degrees. That's a heck of a contrast, and those weather thunderstorms are now occurring. And again, some of them are very heavy. Take a look at some temperatures, and you can see the differences. Look at here, Twin Cities, 75 degrees. If you head up into the northern part of our state, 45, down to 43 in central Wisconsin. And if you go over the UP of Michigan, temperatures still just in the upper 30s. So it's that big temperature contrast, which is allowing the development of the heavy thunderstorms, along with a lot of moisture coming from the Gulf. Look at the cloud cover, and you can see, you can actually see the swirl around this low pressure system. A lot of warm, moist air coming up from the south, cool, drier air coming in from the north, and that storm running along the warm front, triggering some heavy, heavy thunderstorms. Let's go to radar right now, and we will see there is a big line of thunderstorms stretching all the way from about Mankato up north toward Duluth. And a lot of those, as you can see, are red. And those red ones are the very heavy thunderstorms containing uh, heavy rain, strong winds, and reports so far of three-quarter inch hail. Golf ball size hail. We'll take this in a little bit. 
We'll find that most of the heavy ones are just to the southeast of the cities and also up toward the northeast. I guess we can't get it any closer. Take my word for it. They are. There we go. There's a heavy one right down in Dakota County and some more out toward our southeast up toward Chisago County. Some heavy thunderstorms. The reds are the heaviest. Those are the ones with the heavy downpours, the hail and the strong winds. Be careful. Okay, we'll go back now to the satellite photograph, the big picture. You can see it all there, all the moisture, all the cloud cover. But look at the clearing skies. Those will get here eventually into the Twin Cities. Things are going to finally change. may take us uh, another day or so before we get into that change, but fear not, we will get to it. Here's the map for tomorrow, that storm system and all the moisture, the heavy thunderstorms are moving off to our south. This will be our weather for Sunday. Take a look at the forecast for tonight because we will see showers and thunderstorms. And again, some of them can be heavy. We'll keep you updated throughout the evening on the numerous warnings and watches. The entire area remains in a severe thunderstorm watch until 10 p.m. And I'll go over the warnings one more time until 6 p.m. for eastern Chisago County, Washington counties, and Polk and St. Croix counties in Wisconsin. Expect overnight lows to range from 48 to 52. Then tomorrow, some morning showers. It'll turn a bit cooler. Hopefully, I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I've got yard work to do. We'll see some sun late in the day. 57 to 62, but Sunday looks beautiful. Take a look at it. Sunny, 65. More showers and perhaps a thunderstorm moving in on Monday, 59. Cooler on Tuesday, 53 degrees. So a lot of weather things happening as we urge everybody. Stay tuned and be careful. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that's saving us right now from any tornadoes is that the winds in the upper level of the atmosphere are not blowing very strong, and that's one of the necessary ingredi ingredients for tornado development. Well... I'll tell you, we'll get things dried out Saturday afternoon. You can do your yard work. That's right. Sunday's sunny. You can head over to my house. Yeah, <laughs> I'll supply the rake. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. U.S. consumers are borrowing money at a record rate, according to the federal government. Dennis Doffer has details on that and other business news in tonight's Dollars and Cents. How are they interpreting this? Well, it appears that our collective eyes are a little bit bigger than our collective pocketbook right now.